What's up guys, this is Nightwing2303 from Weartesters.com and today we have Ask Nightwing number 6, I think. Uh, I can't remember. It's Ask Nightwing, so we'll just leave it at that. Um, but this is where I just kind of take in your guys' questions via email at asknightwing at gmail.com and then I answer them uh, here in video. Um, they range between moderately personal questions to uh, just personal thoughts or feelings and uh, even technical questions on sneakers and things like that so they're pretty much all over the place and uh, you'll see that soon so I'm just going to go through and randomly select some uh, some questions and then get started all right so Joel, Joel Orm, Ormson uh, he doesn't have a question but he just says hey Nightwing just wanted to let you know that I took your advice and just got the D-Rose 5 for this year's basketball season. Uh, I've wanted to experience boost foam for a while now and hearing you say that if I was considering the Rose 5 to just go out and get it because uh, that's how good boost foam is. So he thought what the heck and went out and got them. Turns out he loves them. Uh, he's, he thinks they look fantastic and the comfort is great. Uh, he said just want to give you a thanks and keep doing what you're doing. There are many of us that appreciate your work. Keep up the good, good work bro. Uh, Thank you. I'm really glad that you like them. Unfortunately, I didn't like them as much as you did, <laughs> but it was mostly because of the fit, though. They were just real painful on my feet for some reason, so um, I, I loved the traction, though, uh, for the most part, and uh, I wouldn't say love, but I liked the traction, and then I really did like the cushion, too. I just, you know, for whatever reason, they pinched the heck out of my, out of the sides of my feet, man, and it was just real painful so um, I do want to try another colorway though just to see if maybe maybe it was just my pair you know what I mean sometimes that happens where you get like a messed up pair because uh, they're I mean these are all mass-produced shoes so you never know you know exactly what can happen and all that stuff but um so that's my my initial thought is that maybe it's just my pair because a lot of other people seem to really like the shoe Okay, so next question comes from Norris Gav. Uh, he says, hey Chris, I've been really enjoying the Ask Nightwing series and I really uh, appreciate the res and respect uh, all the work that you put into your channel. So here's my question. Um, thank you, by the way, really appreciate that. And he asks, how do you think your health and performance skills, uh, it's in quotations, has changed since you started making YouTube videos four years ago with a potato camera? <laughs> uh, thanks, Norris. Um, so, uh, well, my health, I mean, is fine, you know what I mean? Like, I'm probably in the best physical shape that I've ever been, uh, just because of how much activity I, I get. Um, I'm sore all the time, but that's, I guess, a good thing, you know what I mean? So, um, I've had injuries and little nagging ones here and there, like I explained last time, but, um, overall, I don't think my health is, uh, any worse off. If anything, it's, it's better. Um, like a long time ago, or I don't know how long it's been, but um, I used to I used to smoke cigarettes uh, for man since like senior year of high school. That's when I quit the basketball team. Uh, by the way, I was I got into some really bad stuff when I was when I was younger. Not really bad stuff, but it was just dumb stuff. And um, uh, yeah, so I kind of like lost track uh, at that time in my life. And um, uh, I smoke cigarettes, I did drugs and things like that. I, I'm completely clean now. Um, I haven't done a, any drugs in a long time. Um, I don't keep track of that stuff though. Like I know that some people like to keep like anniversary dates and stuff, but I don't, I don't want to celebrate the fact that I ever did that stuff. So I'd completely like forget it like on purpose. Um, I just don't really care, uh, when I stop doing it. But yeah, since, since doing the videos, um, I was still smoking in the beginning and then I want to say I haven't smoked a cigarette maybe two years, three years, something like that. Uh, it's been a while, and um, so if anything, like I said, it, my health is is better now than it's ever been. As far as my skills changing, um, I'd say I'm probably maybe not right now, just because it's it's a little hard to move sometimes. But um, maybe about a year ago I was probably at my I'd say my peak uh, as far as skills are concerned uh, my shooting's pretty good uh, as usual but um, I was a little bit more nimble I guess uh, back then like I didn't have like a I, I have a messed up back and 
from, that's not from basketball. That was from work. Um, but, uh, yeah, just little things, a little nagging injuries, like I was saying. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think my skills are probably better then just because I, I was able to move a little bit easier. Um, but there is also certain things where like, I'm a better player, I guess now than I was in high school. Like in high school, you're more, more reckless and you don't take your time. You don't, uh, really know the game. You know what I mean? Um, so now it's more strategic and stuff like that so i can i can really like see things on the floor uh that, that's the biggest thing i think that basketball is in my opinion at least is basketball is a game that forces you to have in-game kind of changes like like that like you it's a reactionary game like you can't just go and do it you know what i'm saying like you got somebody on you you have plays being made uh even if you're making a play, it might not go according to plan. And so you have to be able to adapt and, and change right, right then and there. It's almost like, um, improv, like you just kind of like improv comedy. You got to just kind of go with it and you got to be real quick. And that's kind of how it is on, on, on the basketball floor, especially, especially during pickup games. Um, or if you have a team like, like golden state right now, where they have great chemistry, uh, and things just happen. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now with, with my skills. Um, but yeah, my range has gotten better too, as far as like shooting range. Like I can, I, in high school, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't strong enough to make a three pointer from NBA range, but now I'm, I can do that. So, uh, but yeah, I don't think I'm like a crazy good player or anything like that. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm decent, I guess on, on the floor. So I can definitely shoot and that's my strongest suit. And then everything else just kind of is a reactionary thing where, you know, something happens and I react to it. All right. So Nolan Fitter, he asks, Hey, Nightwing, big fan living overseas in Beijing, China. Uh, this, the whole sneaker world here is popping up here more and more. And I was wondering, what do you think the best zoom experience is also keep up the great work. Always a fan of what you put out Uh really big. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, China is actually one of those places, China and Japan have always been into fashion and sneakers and stuff, but not like, not like as obsessive, I guess, as like here in the U S. Um, but, uh, yeah, as times change, I guess like it's gonna, uh, get bigger everywhere. You know what I mean? But, um, as far as the best zoom air experience, uh, I'd probably say, I would probably have to say maybe the original Jumpman pro they had full length zoom. Those things were super comfortable. Um, the 2004 Jordan 12 retro, those were also super comfortable full length zoom. Um, both, both of those models had like a, a nice soft file on midsole, uh, with them. So, um, like the newer retro 12s have like more dense file on, even though they do have full length zoom. So even though they are comfortable, they're not as comfortable as those. And then like the LeBron tens, I think is a really awesome zoom air experience. Um, it's just a little bit too much for me, like as far as, uh, like thickness. So I like the thinner full length zooms. Um, the, the LeBron 10 is a great model. Don't get me wrong. It's just way too much thickness for me to where I'm not only higher off the ground, but then it's also hard to flex, but yeah, the original zoom airs were just unbeatable in my opinion. Um, it was like the best low profile responsive cushion that you can ever get Uh zoom air for a very long time was my favorite cushion source, like period. Like there was no other cushion that I wanted to play in other than zoom air at a time in my life. And now it's not like that just because zoom air is so thin, like the embedded stuff, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, those, those two models, original 14s, 13s, stuff like that, 15s, um, they have some really wicked comfortable zoom air inside of them. Okay. So Michael Garcia, he says, Hey, Nightwing, I really love, uh, your work reviewing sneakers and it helped me a lot on choosing a shoe that is right for me performance wise so off court question though. Personally, what do you think of the Kashi, Kashi run? Do you think that they are better than the Roshi run or the other way around? Or are they basically the same? Thanks and more success. 
Okay, so I don't actually know what this shoe is, so let me go look it up real quick. Oh, okay. They look exactly the same. At least in my opinion, there's a little bit more layers to it, so the design looks kind of cooler. And the midsole is a little more contoured in certain areas, uh, so it looks less like marshmallowy um, or chunky, I guess. But yeah, they should be they should be exactly the same. So I would probably go with either whichever one you think is visually more appealing or whichever one is cheaper, because um, I th I'm pretty sure you're just going to get the the same thing out of both of them, which is just a uh, actually it looks like the Kashi retails a little bit cheaper. Kashi actually might be a um, uh, like a like Nike's own knockoff of their own shoe. <laughs> so because I think. I think Roshi's, or how much are Roshi's? I can't even remember. Are they like $70? Oh, okay. Yeah, so I guess Roshi runs are only like $4 more. So it really doesn't matter. Um, they're pretty much the same shoe. So, um, but yeah, that's my opinion. I think they look the same too. I mean, it doesn't look any drastically different um, in my opinion. So sorry if that doesn't help you, but yeah, they're pretty much the same shoe. So Miguel Feliz, he says, Hey Nightwing, thanks for all the work you put on YouTube and wear testers. It really helps your average baller and consumer like me look for that perfect shoe. Uh, but anyways, do you think that the remastered Jordans will perform exceptional on court with good cushion or will they just be more lifestyle targeted? Thanks again. Um, okay, so if it's a basketball shoe, then it's a basketball shoe. Whether it's a retro or not, it's a basketball shoe. Um... But, uh, should you play in it just because cushion sources, you know, that's, that's the real debate. Um, older models definitely don't have the cushion that newer models have. So even if you say, for example, if you get the remastered Air Jordan 4, is that going to be any, like, is that going to be drastically different than the Air Jordan 4s that released, uh, a couple years ago or whatever, um, and I'm going to say overall, no, they're going to have much better materials. So it's going to not be so stiff on your feet uh, as far as the upper goes flexing movements uh, or just flexing in general um, transition and uh, stuff like that. But as far as um, the actual cushion, I mean, you can't get around a polyurethane midsole heel embedded air unit and a forefoot embedded air unit. It's going to be the same whether it's a remastered Jordan or uh, not. You know what I mean? Like it's the same cushion. So um, the thing that made some of the first run of retros and the originals so comfortable is that they had different insoles within them. Uh, some of them had embedded EVA uh, pieces inside. Um, a lot of them came with polyurethane midsoles, which were really comfortable. Uh, so, so yeah, so it's, it's one of those things where you're not going to get around that because it's just, it's the standard for that particular shoe, like the Air Jordan 3. It has a polyurethane midsole, whether it's going to be remastered version or a non-remastered version, it's polyurethane. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So it's not going to be the best cushion until maybe you get to the later models. So, um, so like the Air Jordan 10, they're going to have better leather than the Air Jordan 10s previously, but even then the Air Jordan 10s previously never had horrible leather. You know what I mean? So, um, if I was going to play in either of those, they still got the same stuff. They got the same rubber outsole with the same traction pattern. They got the same, uh, full length air unit inside of the, the file on missile. So, um, it really wouldn't matter. Uh, so you can play in either one, um, and it'll be fine. It's just that you're going to get whatever that era's cushion system is. So like these, this is polyurethane. You have an air unit there and then you have an air unit embedded in the toe. Uh, whether this is a remastered version or not, it's going to be exactly the same. You know what I mean? The only difference is going to be that upper. Um, unless they like do something with the insoles and stuff like that, which I highly doubt that they'll do. Um, you never know, but I mean, I, I highly doubt it. So, uh, yeah. So if, you know, I, if, if this Jordan six was next to a remastered Jordan six, I would play in these just as fine as I would in the remastered, you know what I'm saying? So, um, there's just certain aspects that are not going to change. And that's, that's one of them. Uh, the one thing though, is that you're going to, you're going to be paying a, a boatload of money for those remasters, man. And I mean, not that, not that that should matter when it comes to like whether or not you should play in them. Cause current hoop shoes range at that 200, $225 mark now too. Um, but 
if I'm going to pay that much money, I'm going to want a more modern shoe. You know what I'm saying? So that that's just me. If I'm going to pay 200 bucks for a, for Jordan to play basketball in, I'm going to go with the 29s versus the Air Jordan 6. All right. So Joseph asks, uh, he says, two questions. If you were or had been in the NBA, would you have balled in any retros? If so, which ones? Uh, and if you had to sign with a company such as uh, Adidas, Under Armour, Nike, Peak, Jordan, etc., which one would it be? All right, so if I was in the NBA, um, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to wearing retros, but I would probably be forced to sign with whatever, or forced to wear with whatever company I signed with. So uh, if I was with, like, for example, a lot of guys, they enter the league and you get a contract with Nike. It's not a... Um, signature contract like you would like an endorsement deal like with like uh kobe or lebron or anything like that but you do get a, you do get a small contract you get a small fee uh paid to you but then what you do get in return is a ton of sn sneakers you get all of the pe's the special colorways you have access to getting whatever retros and other branding uh underneath that nike umbrella uh, other shoes that you could get um and you know it's great uh for that uh but as far as like if I was, say if I was going to be a signature athlete, like a signature level level athlete, which brand would I want to sign with? It would probably be uh, maybe either Under Armour or Jordan slash Nike, which I consider the same thing. Um, and that would pretty much be it. I'd be happy with Peak, uh, don't get me wrong, but um, I do think that some of the tech in uh, uh, Under Armour and then Nike and Jordan are just a little bit more next level. Uh, than than peak peak is a very good but basic uh, performance shoe so um, uh, Nike and Jordan is, and Under Armour they tend to push things a little bit further so uh, while they might not be successful in everything that they put out uh, like the um, uh, what were those one shoes uh, those really high top Under Armours so that uh, I can't remember what their name is but um, those were horrible uh, the fit everything the cushion was great but everything else was bad um and then same with like jordan and nike and stuff i mean not every shoe that they put out is a hit you know what i mean so per performance wise um but uh yeah so it'd have to be one of those two um but if i was just like a basic nike or a basic athlete i would i mean i probably wouldn't even sign with a brand just so i could play in whatever i wanted um you know what i mean unless i was going to get a signature contract that would pay me lebron money <laughs> so so uh but yeah because a lot of a lot of these guys like the adidas guys like they get they're different than nike that's why adidas is getting all of these athletes because adidas is willing to pay these athletes money um to wear their product and like iman shumpert and stuff like that like that dude gets paid money to wear adidas he probably doesn't like the product he's wearing i can almost guarantee it and uh he's gonna wear it anyways because he's getting paid by adidas more than he would with nike okay so my battery looks like it's dying um and i know that i haven't done this for long as long as like i usually do but that's okay right uh, everybody likes a, a shorter video um so i'm going to take one more question and then be done for today and andrew robert he says if you're testing or just playing in a shoe that causes your feet to have blisters how do you treat or deal with the blisters so it really depends on what exactly is going on um one of my favorite shoes this year is the clutch fit drive and that shoe even now like I've been playing in that thing for a while, and uh, even now I'll still get blisters every time I wear it, just because the ventilation is so uh, low on that shoe, where there's just a lot of buildup of moisture. And then I move my feet a lot because I'm a guard, and so with that you're getting friction and moisture causing blisters. Um, you can try using baby powder when you play. I don't personally like that. What I like to do is just play. And then when I get the blisters, I get the blisters, I take shower, uh, make sure that everything's clean, and then I uh, just let them air dry out and form calluses. And then hopefully I don't end up with blisters in that spot anymore because I have a callus. Um, and then as far as, like I wouldn't say it's a blister, but like a hot spot. So um, so like if I'm, if I'm wearing these, usually I'll wear uh, quarter cut socks now because that way I don't get like these issues and stuff, but um, I used to wear no-show socks when I play basketball. Um, and say there's like a stitching piece right here, I used to have this issue all the time with LeBron's, even with higher cut socks, it would piss me off. Um, but they would have like weird 
uh, exposed stitching inside the tongue and then you'd lace up the shoe and it would like enclose over your foot um, and then it would push that like little knot of material uh, into your foot and when you're moving it it chafes and with your skin being wet from the moisture uh, your skin's soft like naturally more softer than it would be if it was dry now with that you would eventually rub either that area raw or rub like a hole in it and uh, what that's what I call a hot spot and that would really irritate the hell out of me and it would happen more often than not not so much anymore but it, it used to happen a couple years ago quite often just because of the way that shoes were made back then so now you can see when uh, stuff is stitched together there's no little knots and things like that but if you take like the LeBron uh, 9 it would be all exposed stitching and things like that and it would just it would really irritate the heck out of me and um, it'd be pretty painful so when I get issues like that um, I would wear a, um, a level one uh, compression sleeve. I'll put a picture in case you guys don't know. It's just a neoprene ankle sleeve. It doesn't really give you any real ankle protection. It's, it's considered an ankle brace, um, or a level one ankle brace is what it's called. And uh, it's just a neoprene sock, basically, and it's thick enough to where it's not going to allow whatever issue I'm having to keep happening because it's so thick, um, way thicker than even double socking like double socking I, I hate doing that because I don't like how it feels and all that stuff but um double socking is also a way to somewhat minimize blisters and stuff but if you're going to get blisters some people just prone to it some people just got really sweaty feet and so it happens other people uh like I have friends that where they their feet really don't sweat much at all and um and they don't really get blisters at all so so it really just depends on the situation but that's what I do if I ever have issues um and then if I have like actual blistering like on my feet I just let it callous up and hopefully it never happens again all right guys so that is going to do it for today's ask nightwing um again I do this every week you can always submit questions to ask nightwing at gmail.com and then I just kind of randomly pick them through and uh answer them on video so thank you guys for watching thanks for all your support and until next time guys have a good one